Audio is audio. All right, happy Sunday. My name is Paul Norton. I'm the marketing manager for Linear Integrated Systems, uh, always known as Paul N on uh, DIY Audio. Uh, today I wanted to briefly, uh, I guess, kind of make an introduction to the company. Though we've been here a few years, we've never done any real formal presentation to more or less uh, make sure, oh yeah, those guys do that. I only thought they did that. So we'll run through that real quick and then give you a little brief overview of what we're gonna be working on in the next year. So go ahead, first slide. Uh, little background, we're a 25 year old uh, semiconductor company, full service, uh, making predominantly discrete semiconductors. Uh, product line consists of bifed amplifiers which is uh, uh, a MOSFET with uh, N NPN, uh, bipolar transistors, uh, current regulating diodes, and of course JFETs, uh, high-speed lateral DMOS switches, uh, low leakage diodes, and actually peak amp leakage diodes, uh, MOSFETs, and I guess in MOSFET land, these are small signal MOSFETs. They're not output or power MOSFETs. Uh, additionally, we do uh, photo FETs, which are kind of once in a blue moon, along with the voltage controlled resistors. Uh, the company founder, John Hall, uh, was founder of both Intercell and Micropower Systems. Uh, he holds uh, numerous patents for semiconductor technology, as well as designs. Uh, he was responsible for introducing Seiko to the one volt CMOS process, which entitled them to get into the digital watch business, making the first digital watch. Um, We've got over 40 plus years of uh, semiconductor fab and design experience in both bipolar, CMOS, lateral DMOS. We have a very good thin film resistor process and as well radiation hardening. Uh, we do our design, our fabrication, and our testing in Fremont down the street there. Uh, we do our assembly offshore in both Asia and India. Um, since 1987, uh, we've been providing second source replacements for over 2,000 industry part numbers from people like uh, Analog Devices, Siliconics, Fairchild, Motorola, National Semiconductor, Toshiba, as well as Philips. Next slide. This more or less gives you an, uh, a tree of what we do. Most people think we just do JFETs. Well, we do a lot more than JFETs. A lot of you folks have been previously ordering a lot of the, uh, the Fairchild products in TO92 you probably found you're not getting them anymore. Well, a lot of that stuff that you were getting from them, we also do. So the 310s, 4391s, all that stuff like that is stuff that we're currently producing. Next slide. Now getting into the audio products. Uh, of course, you know the uh, LSK-170, uh, second source is the Toshiba part. Uh, we came out with that part in both the TO-92 package as well. We put that into a SOT-23 package, which they weren't offering, so a lot of the newer designs can take advantage of that part. Next slide. Uh, the companion that is the LSK-389, which is a monolithic dual version of that. Once again, it's designed to second source the Toshiba part. Unfortunately, we don't have access to the same package manufacturers they do, so we couldn't come up with a very straight the package had all those straight pins in them. So we had to come up with a TO-71 package. Next slide. Now we're talking about the new parts that we've recently introduced, the LSK-49 and the LSK-189. Next slide. Benefits of the LSK-49, once again, it's a uh, ultra low noise, low capacitance, dual JFET, which is an addition to our family. Obviously, we've put it in there for the professional microphone people and instrumentation Surprisingly, you'd be surprised how many people from national labs that do radiation detection are looking for that part for some reason, but it seems to have a broad acceptance in the marketplace. Uh, basically provides the 1.8 nanovolts, similar to the LSK-389, however, you're doing it at about a fifth of the capacitance. And so we're giving, once again, people an opportunity to get low noise, doing it a different way. Monolithic dual design, back in the day, you were using two chips side by side, we put two chips on one piece of silicon. The benefit to that is that you get very good tracking over temperature as well, very good matching. Uh, the, uh, let's see, the low capacitance provides a design alternative to the classic CASCO configuration in order to achieve increased bandwidth using less parts. I probably didn't know what I was saying, but anyway, you guys do. <laughs> Go ahead. 
All right, some of the benefits to this part, uh, ultra low noise, uh, 1.8 nanovolts, low capacitance, high input impedance, uh, breakdown voltage is around 40 volts. Typically that device will operate above 40 volts. We're just putting minimum on there. So in general, that device will operate somewhere between 60 and 90 at some points, but you can't hold me to that, but it's, we're putting a minimum on there. So uh, looking at the uh, Delta VGS, 20 millivolts, IDSS matching, 10%. Uh, once again, this is a improved version of the U401. We've got uh, significantly better noise performance. Additionally, we're offering these things in the SOT23-6 package, which is smaller as well than the SO8 package. We also offer the SO8. Uh, we're offering the TO71 package uh, for the uh, single version of that, which is the LSK189, which would be a complement to your LSK170, as would the 389 be for the 49. Uh, we offer that in uh, SOT23-3 as well as TO92. So basically, you've got the same components as the 389, the 170, you have the 49, the 189, so. Next. A little view into the future of things that we're gonna be looking at and things that we've done over the last year. Uh, as we've announced here uh, and on the DIY audio, we have finally released the LSJ74 uh, into limited production for the DIY community. Uh, we are still having discussions on a one-by-one -one basis with the OEMs, people with a consumption rate that is consistent with our current ability We'll still will get product, it's just that there's certain individuals that have higher consumption rates that we still need to gear up for, but we do intend to gear up for them, so. Um, additionally, uh, we've released, as I said, the LSK 49 and 189, which are another part of the family that we're looking to increase, basically lower noise and lower capacitance. Uh, one of the things that we've been chased over time with is, obviously, everybody wants the P channel, uh, we're also looking to come out with a dual P channel. Initially, we were looking at coming out with the LSJ109 uh, as a complement to the LSK389. Uh, as you would imagine, given the, the amount of time and so forth that we've uh, been involved with this thing, it's a hard part to make. Uh, specifically, the hard elements are that is being able to make the individual IDSS range in a consistent basis to provide enough yield to get into production. Uh, it takes a good learning curve. We have some folks over there that work on our fab who spend hours and hours just trying to tweak the process in order to be able to hit those IDSS ranges. Well, what we said was, let's do something easier. The LSK-49 has one range of IDSS, which means our ability to get that into a P-channel product quicker and faster is the way we're gonna go. So what we're doing right now is we're releasing the dual P-channel version of the 489 into fab and we'll be looking to hopefully come out with that within the first part of next year. So stay tuned, but once again, I've been telling you you're gonna get the 74 for the last four years, so do have some patience. Uh, let's see, other than that, uh, we have come out with things called sample boxes. Uh, some we will sell, some we will give away. Uh, what we're trying to do is more or less uh, broaden the company's exposure in a lot of the new design areas. So if any of you gentlemen are interested in that, let us know and we'll see what we can do to help you. Additionally, um, strangely enough, we have samples over there. So if you guys want any samples of the 189, 49, or the J74, they're over there. Um, additionally, we're looking into the future. We go out and we visit customers. Uh, sometimes customers give us some ideas that we will follow up on. Uh, currently, we've had some discussions uh, in relative to having a higher power dissipation package for some of our parts. And so we're taking a little bit of an experiment right now and doing some test runs of the LSK70 in a SOT89 package to see whether there's any acceptance or need for that in the market. So we should be having samples available for that probably within another two months. Uh, another area that we've been uh, hit on is everybody thinks SOT23 is a too big of a package. Uh, we agree. The problem is, unfortunately, with a company such as ourselves, we do not have our own assembly facilities. We work with third-party ones like the ones that Linear Tech or any of these other people use. Unfortunately, the availability of testing for some of the real itty-bitty packages don't exist for us. So what we're looking right now is to take a leapfrog over that and go into what's called a QFN package, which is basically a little bit bigger than the die, and it's got a bunch of pads on the side there. So we're gonna be running some uh, uh, test lots on that 
to see how everything shakes out on that. And if that turns out to be something that we can produce uh, profitably and easily, then we'll probably be rolling out a specific product group specific with the QFM packages. Uh, additionally, we're also looking at coming out with some quads in both the NPN and PNP family. Um, most of the people look at us as for our JFETs, but we're aware that some of the engineers are utilizing our PNPs and NPNs in some of their circuits as well. To meet their requirements, we're looking to come up with quads uh, to see if that assists them in any. Uh, additionally, I did my first YouTube video. Uh, we're currently up to about 800 hits. Good opportunity to see what marketing looks like staring at the headlights. So hopefully I'm gonna get easier at that, but uh, that's one area that we're gonna start working on. Um, we're gonna be probably partnering with San Jose State to get some of their interns in to start doing some videos on both how you test certain elements of our parts as well as some of the applications. So I would say keep checking our application site uh, as well as our social media and you'll expect to see a lot more activity. And that's it. Any questions? Oh, there's John, I'm sorry. John, John, John was not able to join us today and I do apologize, but uh, as you can see, he's sitting there taking apart a Quantech. So, does he need any schematics? No, 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 no. no. But anyway, okay. I'm sorry, jump to you. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. Since the '74 has been a staple for you, and it's a warm yield product, what does your crystal ball tell you for how far in the future the prices are going to start coming down? Uh, probably not. I mean, I'll be brutally honest, it's, we've invested a lot of time, a lot of money into doing this. It's a specialty product. Uh, typically, the people that are putting it into equipment are putting it into expensive equipment, not equipment that's sold at Kmart. And so, uh, we're, if you really look at it, the price differential between the P channel and the N channel is probably about two to three times, which is done to help us recoup what it's taken us to, you know, to, for the last four years trying to put it in there. Uh, not to say that in the future we won't attempt to lower the price and deal with individuals on a case-by-case -case basis, but I would say within the DIY community at this point, prices will maintain themselves just based on the fact that we're just trying to at least get some stuff out to you while we're trying to still work on supporting the low, larger OEM people out there. So it's never going to be a 10 cent part anymore. Any other questions? We're going to have the raffles right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.